As a child, um, I remember age 10 already wanting to become a historian. So um, that's, what, that's what happened. Uh, so I studied history in France, uh, political science, as uh, many middle class Frenchmen must. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, uh, but I, I got my research training in Cambridge with uh, Peter Laslett, who was the great specialist on the uh, on uh, the history of family systems. I, I started as a head librarian at the uh, Institut National d'Etudes Démographiques. I, I left journalism or cultural journalism uh, uh, when I was perhaps 34. But my, uh, I feel at home at Ined because it's the, it's the, it's the world of uh, statistics. And I, I, I use uh, statistics uh, say, rather heavily. I'm, uh, I enjoy uh, reading uh, demographic data, looking for strange or odd uh, figures that lead to discoveries. And, uh, and INED is, uh, well, it's just the right place because they, all the people there are very different and they've changed a lot. They're, it's not the same place, uh, the place it used to be. It's, it's the place where people live among statistics and there's a kind of statistical language. This never was a problem for me. Uh, first of all, because I'm also, uh, to be completely honest, what my teacher in France was, uh, still is Emmanuel Leroy Ladurie, who was a French leading historian and a friend, a friend of the, the family. Well, I'm, I've got to apologize. I was born into the French intellectual establishment. <laughs> I'm not a self-made man at all. Uh, and uh, Le Roi Ladurie is perhaps the best, the greatest uh, representative of the Annal School, l'école des Annales, uh, after people like Baudel uh, and many others. And uh, the, the thing, uh, so I'm just a modest student or produce of, at school and the thing with the analysis called the great thing was to mix all uh, disciplines and, and the very, very, very different social sciences to uh, I remember interviewing Fernand Baudet for Le Monde with Baudet explaining to me uh, that the what made the analysis school so famous and uh, uh, and so su successful was that they, it was the, uh, the, the use of other human sciences, sociology, geography, anthropology. And so, so this is the way uh, I was brought up or, uh, as, as, as a historian. So it's just uh, completely natural for me to mix all discipline. I, it just, I, I just don't see the... Uh, I'm, 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 it's, I'm completely unable to say when I'm sort of crossing a border, moving from a... When you take the, the, the peasant societies of the world, before they get into uh, the, the globalization process, the, well, there used to be very different types of family systems. The, the, the traditional Western family, well, English or Northern French was a nucleotype, always the nucleotype and never was anything else. That's what my teacher Laslett discovered for England. And in other countries like well, Germany and Japan, you will find uh, uh, what's called the stem family. It's, it's got the, the, the lineage thing with the f well, eldest child, eldest son inheritance and, uh, and a basic principle of inequality between children, a much stronger authority pattern. And so a first sort of a, a measure of patrilineal uh, bias uh, then you will find the, in Russia, China, or northern India, you will find what I call the community family, but which used to be called the patriarchal family, or in India it's called the joint family. 
that you've got, to, you, what you must imagine is the, an ideal type which will consist in uh, the father, his married sons, and, and then equal division of inheritance uh, when the father dies. And, uh, and there are other types. I, I want, well, I, I could take hours explaining. And the question is, is are the, the, the larger, more compact, more anti-individualistic systems in, uh, in Eurasia breaking down and converging onto the, 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 the Western pattern? There are signs, I quoted uh, William Good, who, who was a, a major uh, uh, writer on the family. He was the first promoter of the idea of a convergence onto the Western uh, model. Uh, and there are, well, part of this is true, and uh, the, the book I wrote, wrote with uh, Youssef Courbage on, 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 on the Arab world uh, was very much a book on demographic convergence with the, uh, uh, the fall of uh, fertility rates in the Arab world or the whole of the Muslim world, and, and of course the, the fall uh, birth control supposes some kind of... Uh, conjugal family emerging somehow. So the part of this is true, but, but uh, this being said, there are many signs that uh, of non-convergence. Uh, one of the best examples would be the, uh, the rise of the sex ratio in China. You see the sex ratio, it's the proportion, the, uh, how many uh, male uh, birth to every hundred uh, female birth. The, uh, the natural human rate is uh, 106 or 107 at the most. A country like China, which used to be very patri well, heavily patrilineal, male biased, we now have sex ratios uh, as high as uh, 120. But within the, the select club of advanced nations, there are huge differences. I mean, the difference between 2 and 1.4 is, is something that will define different futures for society. Uh, mass migration, immigration in Germany, perhaps leading to uh, different type of society, well, uh, moderate immigration in France and uh, something else in the US. I'm now halfway through a book on the uh, sort of a, a social, anthropological interpretation or vision or description of uh, globalization in a sort of measured way. I'm rather pro-immigration and fusion and adaptation. But on the other hand, uh, the world is in crisis. There's this tremendous rise in inequality. There is a uh, a, a near stop in uh, educational progress in the most advanced world. This started in the US in the 60s, in fact. Perhaps it's the first time when we have, well, there's still a history and things are going to happen, but there's a feeling, a, a strange feeling of uh, stagnation in spite of technological progress. And I'm, I'm trying to study the underlying family, social, anthropological things that could explain this feeling of uh, slurring, disintegration in this situation where uh, we ought to be efficient and optimistic and we ought to be producing the most extraordinary society in the history of humankind. And Wonderful, but I, I, I can't, uh, uh, well, I enjoy very much the, the, the people I met, they're very open-minded and uh, I'm not completely lucid because I have a, perhaps have a, a special pathological um, relationship to Toulouse. Every time I, I get to Toulouse, I'm, I get into a, a sort of a, a natural state of euphoria, of, of uh, happiness. So, and I, so I, I can't tell, apart, tell things apart, you see. Perhaps it's the people there, the institute or whatever it's called, or perhaps it's Toulouse, I'll never know.